the George Washington National Forest, an area covered by trees, rivers, and full of different animals, such as this millipede. This is going to be, without a doubt, a great video. What's going on YouTube? Chamber Productions coming back at you with another video. And in today's video, as you can see, I am in the Washington National Forest. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a pretty special video. Um, it's a really, uh, it's a pretty area out here. Definitely going to be some unique filming. We're going to do some creek running. We're going to go upstream here. And this is actually one of the streams we'll be going up. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be that. Um, I plan on, again, I'm, we're going to be doing creek running, do some exploring. Hopefully we'll see some cool animals I can catch on camera for you. And we're going to have a blast. I'm going to have a blast making this video. So I hope you all enjoy. One thing I do want to talk about is the clarity of the mountain stream. It is crystal clear and it's absolutely gorgeous. You can even see smaller fish and even trout in these streams. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And you can see some other critters, which we'll take a look at later in the video um, because they come out at night. But you'll be able to see some different critters later on in this video. But like I said, you can see um, smaller fish, trout, and the reason I want to bring this up is because we're going to go creek running and it's going to be a lot of fun. So again, the water is just crystal clear. It's absolutely beautiful and it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, we're going to go up the stream here. Yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, got my walking, my walking cane. There we go. And what's cool is, is you'll find throughout the mountains specifically in lakes and whatnot, stone, these little stone, almost statue-like pieces, pretty cool, almost like, uh, I don't know what you would really call them, but you'll find them out here. I've seen a couple out here in um, a couple other spots, but just giving you another shot, look how crystal clear the water is. All right, guys, we are still heading up the stream. Sorry if I constantly look down because obviously... These, uh, I don't want to trip and fall and uh, drop my camera. I don't want to do that. And these rocks are slick. I mean, it doesn't take much for you to slip, grab a hold of the wrong rock, but you can see how far. I mean, it just goes and goes and goes. So it's an absolutely wonderful experience to uh, come up the creek, river, whatever you really want to call this. But, um,. Yeah, and just the sound of the water flowing through all the rocks and everything, it's absolutely just peaceful, calm, it's, it's a very, very pleasant experience. I am absolutely loving this. And you can see, I think, I'll show you, we're going to get up to that rock right up there, I think and uh, then we're gonna turn around, so. Yeah, it's, it's really nice up here. So I'm getting pretty far here. Um, you can see the rock behind me, and I'll do a little bit of a, there you go. You can see that's, that's the rock right there. And uh, you can see the rock that I was filming in front of a little, little while ago down there. So, definitely got a little bit of uh, exploring to do. But it's an absolutely amazing experience. Water is just crystal clear. It's absolutely amazing. So let's get back to walking in the stream. And you'll see, oh, here it is, right here. There is a tree that got all, from all of the water, the uh, the soil around it's just gotten completely washed away. You can actually see the roots exposed. There's a bug by my camera. But the roots just got completely exposed. It's crazy looking. But All right, guys, so we made it to the rock. So... Huh. Absolutely beautiful, but now we begin our long journey back.
So I built this rock formation in the George Washington National Forest. And if any of you guys come up here camping, let me know if you see it in the comment section below. After returning from creek running, I found the first animal to bring in front of me. Alright guys, so what I have here is actually a ring neck snake. This is a non-venomous species and I actually found it in this uh, rotten, in uh, rotten tree. tree um, they like to burrow in the tree. Now they get the name ring neck snake obviously because they have a little ring around their neck. Again, they're a non-venomous species. This is about as big as they really get. Um, I'll hold them up. Try to hold them up. I don't want to make them uncomfortable or anything and he's wanting to coil so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab him so you can also see the orange coloration on their under underbelly um you can see that I love this type of snake so. it's harmless it's cool looking yeah pretty neat it's going for the camera say hi buddy say hi what you think so get one more up close with them. All right. I think that's everything. Let's set him back in the wood. And he's going to just take straight off back into his little home. As you can see, he's just crawling up. Make sure he's up in there. The ringneck snake is a nocturnal species of snake, so you won't see them out and about during the day, but you can find them under rocks, in dry rotted trees, and, in of, and under other debris. They do have a defense mechanism, and that is to musk. They will musk, and I didn't realize it, but this snake actually did musk on me, and I didn't realize it till after I filmed the video, but a very cool snake. I'm really happy that I found him, and I'm really happy that I was able to bring gorgeous sunset. the snake in front of the camera for you guys. And uh, as you can see, it's getting dark, which means there are going to be some other little critters coming out. So, it's going to be pretty cool. Again, absolutely gorgeous sunset. And we'll see what critters we can find tonight. All right, so I'm out by the stream, and it's obviously nighttime, and a lot of the nocturnal animals that live in the water um, are coming out. So what I'm going to do is look for a very specific little critter, and that is the crayfish. And I'm looking for it for a very specific reason, but I believe I spotted one right there. So I'm going to try to get into the water without scaring it. Well, let me tell you, when I say the water is cold, it is cold. So what I want to do is try to coax some, and you may see this, but try to coax some in from behind because I'm going to put, keep my hand from getting pinched. Got him. That was beautiful. Okay. So a natural defense mechanism is, it's sort of like fight or flight. They've got these claws on the front, um, sort of like a lobster, um, as you can see, but as you also saw how I saw, I coaxed him in by getting the rock towards him, and he used his tail to propel himself backwards, so what I'm actually going to do real quick, a cool thing about this specific species of crayfish, is I'm going to dry my hands off real quick, um, a cool thing, I have a UV black light. This is um, ultra fire, but I have a UV black light. Um, if we can kill the lights real quick and pour some of the water out, this guy actually fluoresces a little bit under the UV black light. What I'm going to do real quick, just to make it easier for you guys to see, is set them down real quick and try to keep them. And this is going to be how we're going to release them, but I thought I thought that was pretty cool. We're going to let them go. We can cut the main lines back on. Pretty cool. Um, you can obviously see there are a lot more fish in here. Um, yeah, I say we try to find some other uh, some other critters out.
Right guys, I'm just doing some exploration right by the campsite here down this trail. Um, looking for any sort of critters, insects, toads, frogs, anything of that nature. Um, anything that'd be worth filming. I don't really see anything, so I think I'm going to head back up to the campsite and call it a night. Um, seeing the crayfish is really cool, so I guess we'll wait and see what Amara brings us, but I think that's everything I'm going to find for tonight, so yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Okay. So, cool little find here, guys. I found an orange salamander here. Um, so I was filming another shot. I was getting ready to film another shot anyway. Whoops. There we go. So I was getting ready to film another shot. Um, we were getting ready to move on to a different location. And I turned over a stone and found this little guy hiding under the stone. Um, just let him crawl on my arm there for a second. Yeah, very pleasant surprise. Didn't know I was going to find him there. Um, I wasn't expecting really to find anything. But I found this little orange salamander here. I don't know a whole lot about salamanders, so I'm going to do some research on them whenever I get back um, to where I have some service and some internet, and uh, I'll put in a little bit more information about them. But as you can see, this guy's got some beautiful coloration. He's got these orange spots on his back, and uh, he's all orange, uh, as you can see. Very cool looking. Now, one thing I do want to point out is when you hold this little guy, look at the speckling on his stomach and you can sort of see it from the side there you can see the speckling going onto his tail and on his stomach um the eye coloring pretty neat somewhat similar to that of a turtle very cool very cool i found him under this stone right here so we're going to release him if we've got all the footage that we need get one more up close for the camera there let him crawl on my arm real quick there we go one more up close Very cool. There we go. I've got you, buddy. We're going to put him back underneath the stone we found him under. Just going to set him down and let him go in his way. That was an awesome catch, guys. <laughs> that was awesome. The eastern newt is a common newt species of eastern North America. It frequents small lakes, ponds, and streams, or nearby wet forests. One thing that's worth noting is that this, um... Newt does have a bright coloration. As seen in this video, it is a bright orange, which is aposematic, meaning that the bright coloration is a warning to potential predators saying, hey, I may be toxic or poisonous, so you might not want to eat me. And this, um, this newt actually secretes a poisonous toxin, and that's why they're so bright. It's a warning coloration. But this is not harmful to humans in any way. Um, I would just wash your hands after handling this this animal. But overall, really cool animal. My uh, my favorite species of newt by far. Just the bright coloration. Really cool looking animal. After we finished filming with the red spotted newt, we took a trip to Elkhorn Lake. Elkhorn Lake is an absolutely amazing site with the open lake and a perfect spot to find some aquatic based animals. I have another, yet again, another species of salamander here. Now we caught this one in the Elkhorn Lake. Really excited to have another salamander in hand. But um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what type of salamander this is. Um, one cool thing you will notice about the tail that is different from the other salamanders is that this salamander has more of a paddle shaped tail. And that is perfect for swimming around in the lake itself. You can see I saw this guy close to the edge. I was able to grab him. Pretty cool. <laughs> you can see the um, the coloration of him. He's got green, some spots on him. Really, really cool. Again, the pat the uh, tail is a lot different from the salamander we were just looking at, given that this guy has more of a paddle shaped tail you can see that right there and it's again excellent for swimming get up close to his face there Hang is on. it in focus there we go it's very calm now really cool little guy so i say uh we saw him back in the water and watch him swim free real quick so you'll get to see how he puts his tail 
and uses that as a paddle. Oh, there was a frog right there. So I'm gonna let this guy go. Honestly, I think I might even have a frog here. So we're gonna set him free. See how he's using his tail as a paddle into the water. Awesome, fine, let's see if we can catch anything else like a frog. Got him, got him. Uh, um, man, <laughs> they get near the water close enough and they will jump right in. Look at how long his back, his back legs are. Not... Eye color there. Hang on, just say there we go. Right, eye color, absolutely amazing looking. That's awesome. All right, I think we're ready. Get one more close up with him. Let's send him back into the water. That is absolutely awesome. Set him down. All right. Oh, looks like he's just going to rest there by the rock. There we go. After we finished filming at Elkhorn, we went back to the campsite. All right, we going? So we've gone creek running, and I think one of the only. Uh, I think one thing I really want to catch, I know one thing I really want to catch on camera is me actually swimming in this watering hole here. The water is absolutely freezing. I'm going to do it. So be sure to leave a like for this video because this water is cold. All right. If you guys are ready, here we go. Whoa. Coming back to you. All right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> So after getting dried off and everything, it's definitely a unique experience to go into the watering hole and swim. It wakes you up, it's cold, it's around 40 degrees right now, but it's a unique experience. It's definitely, in my opinion, it's worth it. It is cold, granted, but it's something to look absolutely amazing up here. Um, it's a unique experience. After a while, we went back, started a campfire, and we had some s'mores. After eating some s'mores, I decided to go out on one last night expedition trip to find some animals. And um, I have one other little critter I want to bring up close for the camera real quick. And that is a granddaddy long legged spider. There we go. Right here. Now, oh, it looks like, oh, this is awesome. So, we bring him up close for the camera he actually has a gnat that he just dropped in my hand as a prey item but these guys uh, are for the more, most part harmless um, they are actually I believe venomous but they are not their mouths are too small so they cannot penetrate human skin so they are completely safe to handle and as you can see he has killed a fly and he's in the palm of my hand his uh, prey item Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm totally comfortable free handling this guy. Again, I do believe they are venomous spiders, but they cannot penetrate human skin. So, completely safe for me to free handle. Oh, there we go. Get a close up of him on my finger there. Pretty neat. We're going to set him loose if he wants to. You gonna chill there, buddy? Nope. There we go. And you can actually see in my hand his prey item, which is just a little gnat. So, uh, do you want this back? We'll set it right here for you. But, pretty cool find. I think it's a great way to uh, wrap up today. After I filmed the last segment, I got up the next morning, went out to the river, and skipped some rocks, as I really enjoy doing that. Overall, this was a great trip, and... I'll never forget it. It was an amazing experience.
But guys, that's all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champion Productions, signing off.